All right. <laughs> and my little red book. Yeah, uh, yeah. thinking about this, and these are five lessons I think really about innovation and the link to sustainability. And my first lesson would be, if the market can take care of it, don't do it. And I think for all of us who want to be really good innovators, and also for the researchers, don't do it to make the a little bit incrementally faster innovation. Uh, it's not there. Something that sort of breaks the mold. Uh, and then go, I go to the uh, second uh, uh, recommendation, which is then really, and that goes to um, sustainability, um, understand when good is good enough. Um, my watch is 20 years old, and it's an analog watch. It's precise enough for me. So chasing more precision doesn't do it for me. Um, I rent frequently cars, uh, and the board computer is becoming so complicated. The OS is clever and clever and cleverer, but it was good enough a number of years ago, at least for me. And therefore, that extra innovation doesn't get me anything. So I always want to see when is good good enough. For those of you who use, let's say, a very popular, let's say, uh, word processing spreadsheet suite of a well-known company might say 2007 was good enough or 2003 was good enough. Why do I need 2011? So this, this thinking about when's good good enough. That brings me to the third point and that is really um, if you really create a major innovation uh, it will have a new name. If you use the old name, uh, and that's for startups, oh, we are doing the Facebook with da da da, it's you're not innovating. You're sort of incrementalizing. And uh, I go back over 100 years ago, everybody was building a horseless carriage. Mercedes Benz built an automobile, and with that, things change. Uh, everybody who's building a horseless carriage builds big rear tires, rear wheels. They were wheels with these wood spokes and so on. Mercedes built four same size tires or wheels with rubber tires, a big steering wheel. Everything changes because you're thinking not anymore, oh yeah, we just remove the horses. No, you're building something really new. And so when we look at innovating, it, if we can't give it a new name, we don't have anything new. Number four, be authentic. And I think we heard that again today, and this is, uh, and frequently, uh, companies start out uh, with, so they, they really fill a need. And then when we, come, when we become corporate, frequently the finance people take over, okay? And then it's um, um, the listening to really what's needed is gone because there has to be a package sold. Oh, but we cannot do this because of the, 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 the finance guys tell us that. And so, um, and for large company like if you are uh, here living in uh, California you know um, when you get the uh, the mail from the large telecom providers who want to uh, sell you the triple pay or qu play or quadruple play you know it's the extra add-on is really the price should be incrementally small because it is nothing it's it's just dirt cheap uh, but the price extractor is not an authentic price. So the message has to be, what is the authentic need and fulfilling that authentically? The Clue Train Manifesto told us that really about 10, 15 years ago. And I think the message is really forgotten, but really for any innovator, go back to these messages. And then finally, I think um, my last lesson, innovation, uh, I truly think uh, getting people from multiple uh, sources together, but it's really a individualistic type activities. It's not a committee activity. That's what's important. So get a few individuals together from diverse points of view. Um, it's really at least a three sigma activity because as I mentioned before, you want outliers. You don't want to so be common agreement among large pools, especially with the finance people in the room or the marketing people in the room. Get them out of the room. And then you start innovating uh, and then you really make changes. Thank you very much. Thank you.